Hey, what's going on guys? It's John back with another video. And as you can see, we're not in the same location. We're not in the studio. We're here at my church. And um, I've got a few minutes before people start getting here for practice. So I just wanted to come in and show you guys a couple of little things that I do when I'm playing. Um, and predominantly what I wanna talk about is creating atmosphere with pads. So right now what I have is just a basic piano sound set up here on the keyboard, okay? And this piano sounds fine, but in a moment where you really need that extra flavor, I'll turn this knob and I get my pad sound, okay? And so when you have your pads, one of the key things that you wanna remember whenever you're playing pads is you don't wanna play um, a lot of chords and you definitely don't wanna play a bunch of chords. You don't wanna play a lot of notes and you don't wanna play a lot of chords. You wanna play things really, really spread out. You wanna make sure that you have some room because pads can tend to get very, very muddy. And so if you're just playing basic triads, I mean, this doesn't sound bad, but I wouldn't do this, right? The whole point of pads is to really leave space to leave an atmosphere. So I would probably do something like this. I would have in my left hand, I'd probably go a little bit lower. And I just hold this. And most of you are probably thinking, oh man, well, that's just so simple. Like I wanna, I wanna play. And when you're in worship, you're not, you're not playing to play. You are, you are supplementing the moment with, with the sound, right? And so if there's a moment where the Holy Spirit is moving and people are on their knees and people are crying, you don't wanna be playing a bunch of chords. You may not even wanna be playing a song, right? And you just wanna keep it very simple. This is one of my go-to tricks, octave in the bass, you got an octave in your right hand, but you're also playing your fifth in the middle. And it's very simple. And you just let that ring out. Okay? And if any of you guys are familiar with Agnes Day, this is the perfect moment to go into that. With my left hand just pedaling the one, I'm in the key of E, by the way. What I can do is just softly start that melody. I am using my pedal. You wanna make sure you're lifting your pedal in between your notes so they don't clash. You don't want it to sound like this. Okay, how it's mushing all those notes together, you don't want that. You wanna use your pedal. Okay. Very, very simple stuff, right? I'm being very careful with the notes that I'm playing. I'm being very careful with how many notes I'm playing. I'm normally keeping very spread with octaves and doing simple notes, simple melodies. You don't wanna play fast either. Leave room. Something can happen in a moment like this. your chords and a little bit more movement and you're very soft you're intentional with your dynamics okay all of the things that I've been teaching you guys so far have been about theory been about playing um, chords playing notes playing melodies but ultimately, what you wanna remember is that when you're playing, especially in a worship band, your goal is to create a mood. It's to allow room for the Holy Spirit. And it's not about you. It's not about the other instruments. It's not about the songs that you're playing either. It's about being in worship to God. Everything that you do is worship. And when you put worship before the song, 
you put worship before the chords, what happens is you allow the Holy Spirit to flow through you. And then you can create a mood for the Holy Spirit to come. And everything that I teach you is just so that you have all of the tools that you need to create any sound that you may want. Okay? This is something that I will play in a very, very soft moment. You want to stay in a major, a major chord. Whenever it's a sweet moment, when the Holy Spirit is just kind of moving throughout the room, nobody's singing, everybody's on their knees or praying. This is what you want to play, okay? When you're in spiritual warfare, you want to go minor. And so when you're doing spiritual warfare, the pads take on a different tone. And so you want to be a little bit more full with your chords. You still don't want to mush everything together. So make sure you're using your pedal. But if we're doing something um, like spiritual warfare, in minor. Or you might just hold the six. I've got my six in the bass and in my right hand I'm doing a one chord and then I'm doing a five over six and then I'm doing a four over six back to a five over six this is a very good spiritual warfare chord progression doesn't require you to do a lot but it's powerful now I'm playing by myself of course but remember that you have a whole band behind you. You got a bass player, you got a guitar player, you got a drummer. Even if you have less than that, you're normally not just playing by yourself, okay? And so you want to keep that in mind. You don't want to overplay. And you want to let the um, you want to let the Holy Spirit flow through you in those moments. Know when to bring the dynamics in, when to bring them down. And to be tasteful with where you place different melodies and different different riffs and stuff. get out of spiritual warfare, a good place to go is the four. And then that gives you a nice moment of rest and then you can go back to your one. Right? Okay. These are all just different things that you can do during worship as you play. As you get more proficient with your instrument, you also want to understand what your instrument can do. If you don't have a keyboard that can use pads, then I definitely recommend that you guys get an iPad. There's even apps for your phone now where you can download pads and stuff on your phone and you can hook them up to the sound system. But pads is definitely a powerful tool when we're talking about creating an atmosphere for worship and, 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 and um, glorifying God. Okay because this would sound totally different if I didn't have my pads and it was just the piano. The piano only has so much sustain and there's only so much that you can do, right? Even if your keyboard doesn't have pads, I'm pretty sure it has a string patch. String patches work very great as well. But the whole point is to add that layer of fullness to your playing, okay? And again, everything that I teach you guys 
and so that you can call upon them in moments like this. You'll be able to call upon all of the different things that I've taught you, and you'll be able to use them to create not just um, a moment of worship, but also to skillfully give back what God has so freely given you, okay? And that's what this is all about. It's not about getting a paycheck. It's not about being the best musician on stage. It's not about having the spotlight on you. It's about you being used in such a way to where not only can you give back to God's people, but this is your worship, right? We should be opening our mouths and singing and praising God as well as we play, but God has given you this talent. Whether you're playing drums, guitar, piano, bass, singing, God has given you this ability, and this is what you can use to give back to him. And so when you do, you give it back skillfully because God always gives us his best. And so the reason why this channel exists is to teach you guys and show you guys to be the absolute best that you can be with what God has given you so that you can give him your absolute best in worship. Okay, that's going to be it for this video today. I'm not sure um, why I said the things I said or why I even decided to do this topic, but I wanted to get a video out for you guys. And, and I just feel like um, this is something that needs to be stated. It's something that um, I haven't shared too much on the channel. I've kind of tried to keep things a little bit more on the educational side for the music and, and the instruments. But I don't want you guys to forget where, where the roots are, right? I, I only ever got into music because I told God, I said, you know, I wanted to be able to play music like my dad, who was a, who was a worship pastor. And I said, I want to be able to play like him. And God, if you just give me the ability to play, then I'll only play for you. I'll only worship you with my music. And I've honored God with that. I haven't been signed to any record labels. I haven't been signed to any secular bands. And I've always been in the church. And it's one of those things that I, I truly, truly value. And it's one of those things that you should value as well. And I don't want you guys to take it for granted. Remember that what we do is to worship the living God. Everything that we do is, is an act of worship unto God. Even if we don't always feel like it is. So when you're at home practicing, you're, you're listening to some music, you're learning some new things, always remember why you do it. Remember your why, right? Remember your why. Why do you do this? Why do you worship? Why do you play? And that is going to be a good motivation for you in going forward in the future. And hopefully it'll be something that'll keep you going. That's it. Um, God bless you guys. Um, continue to practice, continue to get better, continue to, to give God your best. You guys take it easy. Stay blessed. I'm out.